you don't know this, but I, I come from uh, voice royalty. My, my aunt was June Foray. Oh, wow. Yeah, so yeah, that's we could talk, we could talk on so many levels. Um, wow. Yeah, we should interview you. No, <laughs> you guys are the stars. Uh, I'm going to start with Rachel. Uh, my God, what, what levels to your voice? I mean, you do a great job in, in everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you. It's funny. American Dad is sort of the most me of any of the shows that I do. It's, it's weird. I remember going into the audition and, you know, being like, okay, you know, what do you guys want? And we want you. We just want you, literally you, how you sound. And so it's, it's probably the easiest gig that I do vocally because it truly is just me. When people are like, let me have some Haley. I'm like, okay, are you ready? I'm going to give you some Haley. Hi, here she is. It's Haley. It's wow. not too much of a strategy. Uh, <laughs> Luckily, I get to play in, in, in other shows. So, How did the album do, the, uh, the, the Haley Sings? How, how did that go? It was great. It was sort of a lifetime dream fulfilled for me. Um, you know, I love to sing. I was a musical theater major in college at the Boston Conservatory, and I have a theater background. And, and so it's been a real treat um, being, you know, having that journey and I've uh, gotten to perform at a bunch of clubs around Los Angeles, which has been really fun too. So it's, um, you know, obviously pre pandemic, it uh, gave me a little bit of that uh, jolt from live performing that I love so much. We're a very musical cast and uh, gosh, I wish we'd do a Christmas album. Uh, I, I, we ought to, we really ought to do that. It would be great fun. I think people would love that. That would be, that would be amazing. And I do know that most voice actors are singers uh, as well. I mean, uh, you know, Jess Harnell is a dear friend of mine and, and uh, you know, they, they're they all wanting to perform songs as well. So the American Dad and Family Guy and all of that really allows you to, to you know, use those pipes. Yeah, there's terrific music uh, in animation. I, I really think that's the, that's the, um, the most fertile well for music maybe in this country in terms of popular music is in animation. You know, you can find really good songs uh, and you do on American Dad. Uh, now and then we've got a few sprinkled in there. Uh, but but uh, uh, gosh, yeah, we should. I, we, I, I, you know what I would love to do is like a full, a fully entirely musical episode. We should pitch that. That's I think that would be really fun. Totally. It could be, I mean, honestly, it could be very current too. We could do like a Hamilton or a Dear Evan Hansen spoof or something like that. It would be great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, a great idea. Do a musical based on Bernie, uh, you know, Sanders and, and uh, there you have it. Uh, D, uh, do you hear rhythms and, and, um, and cadences in, in, in the voices that you do play? You know, uh, that's an interesting question uh, because uh, as a voice actor, you kind of exist as a sponge and you're always listening to this. I mean, and in my case, it's even it's even more bizarre because I'm not just listening to how people speak, but I'm listening to how animals speak and, and, and how how creatures communicate vocally what they're trying to say. And then to not only glean what it is they're trying to say, but then try to replicate how they're saying it. And so I'm I'm always listening for that kind of stuff. Um, uh, you know, recently the, the new series Peacemaker, for instance, uh, I'm eagerly the eagle. I do I do all the eagle sounds for that. And so I, I'm 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 non-denominational in terms of of my my sound sponge activity, which I'm always I'm always very involved with that. Definitely. <laughs> you have that pure Midwestern kind of voice that's uh, that's just absolutely perfect. Well, yeah, that you start with where you're from and um, and then you sort of explore that and have that available. And then the more you perform uh, and this can be through training or through experience, uh, then you add to that in, in terms of accents and characters and age and status and all the things that you can layer in as an actor. That's that's uh, that's that's the the eternal project of, of being ready to create whatever it is that they want for for whatever show it is. <laughs> Rachel, you do again so much. Uh, the voice on, you know, the computer voice on the Orville, and uh, uh, you know, all your stints everywhere. Um, are you are you ever not busy? 
I am always busy. I definitely feel always busy, which is interesting in the pandemic too, because me being always busy means spending most of my days in the closet, which is where my booth is set up. So it's, it's just sort of funny, just sort of being like, okay, kiddos, have a good day at school. Mommy's, you know, going into the closet. But um, I, I feel incredibly lucky that our industry pivoted so quickly and we've been able to continue working the last two years. Um, I mean, it's, it's remarkable to watch new episodes of American Dad and think, oh God, I, yeah, I remember recording that. That was done in my closet, staring at my jeans on the shelf. It's remarkable what- A better place to be, you know, than, than that. Better place to be, I know, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but 17 years, 17 seasons of, of American Dad, it just seemed to go by really quick. It, it, it keeps going strong. Uh, and that's that's the really good news is it's not just going because because it has some kind of irrational momentum, but it's actually as good as it's ever been. Uh, it's as funny as it's ever been. And um, and I think it's just going to keep going. It's a it's a racehorse that just keeps performing. And I think uh, whether you've seen it before or whether you're an old fan of this show, um, uh, the show is as good as it's ever been. And there's, it's surprising, it's inventive, and it, it, it really utilizes the freedom that you have in animation to tell any kind of story that you want, uh, but reeling it back in to the, the kind of family sitcom core that's at the heart of the story that, that, that has a nice... There's a nice sensibility, a nice structure to it. <laughs> to jump Although off 17 years, let me tell you, when we started the show, we weren't all taking out our glasses before the table reads like we are now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're playing the trombone right. with those scripts. Yes, um, exactly. Right. <laughs> Rachel, uh, it, it's no secret your brother is a is is an absolute freaking genius, um, and I have often said he's he's this generation's uh, uh, Orson Welles. I mean, he is just so prolific and so good at everything he does um do, does does he have a weird love for the music man i mean is <laughs> i mean he oh, keeps bringing yeah, up you know, I, <laughs> it's funny we uh we grew up in a tiny town in in connecticut where we had a community theater program that was really like nothing i've ever seen we started doing gilbert and sullivan shows when we were five and six years old i think i was in the mikado when i was nine so uh, I think that's where we got our love of, of tight harmonies and, you know, a real appreciation for good quality musical theater. Um, and, uh, you know, Seth and I wore out our, our memberships at the Kent Video Store renting The Music Man, My Fair Lady, you know, all the classics, all the greats. That was, the, you know, the soundtrack of our childhood. So I think that, that we have such a deep love and appreciation for that early musical theater. I, I think it's, um, for me, I, I've continued to love musical theater. I, I love a lot of the new stuff. Um, I think Seth sort of stops maybe at around 1978. Seth isn't living his career in reverse. Which yeah. is actually picking up steam, whereas Orson kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't expect Seth to be doing wine commercials anytime soon, though. So, uh, I don't think so. Well, the finals, maybe, but. <laughs> uh, Dee, in our final moments that we have uh, all together, what do you think uh, people are going to pull from the 17th season of, uh, of American Dad? It's, uh, you know, there, there's all kinds of crazy stuff coming at you. Uh, Francine uh, kind of falls in love with a frog, uh, much to the consternation of the neighbors. Uh, the family is forced to recreate a German children's show for Klaus that Klaus was very, very fond of. Uh, there, there, there's, there's, there, there's a lot of surprise and a, and a lot of cre creative insanity that, it, that, is, that is coming down that's as good as it's ever been. I, I can't think of any other examples, but it's, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Rachel, I'm giving you the last word, the same question. Oh, gosh. I mean, we see more of Jeff Fisher, my animated husband, which is great. We dive into our relationship a little deeper about how Jeff is such a people pleaser. Um, our Christmas episode, let's see. I, Roger gets a little grinchy. We'll just leave it at that. It oh, my God. Keeps oh, my God. That episode. <laughs> I, that's what episode's like. Is that, are we really going to go there? And they go there. No, wow. it's amazing. Woo! Yep. Well, so we start strong and we end strong at the holidays. So everybody just, you know, stick with us. Merry Christmas. It is, it is such a pleasure and an honor to talk to both of you. You guys are heroes to me. And, and uh, I, I just love what you do and, and uh, keep it up. And I hope to see you 
at a convention sometimes when it's safe to go and, and uh, chat with you, maybe take you out for a cup of joe. We do too. We love conventions and hope to see you there. Hope yep, they're coming back. You guys take care. Thank you so much for your time. Auf Wiedersehen, Tony. Auf <laughs> Wiedersehen.